So uh, we have already placed the trocars. Can you show the trocars, please? It's so an optical trocar, so-called Hassan-type trocar, two 5mm trocars. Uh, and here's a 12mm a trocar. We insert the needles and we remove the prostate via this incision. So can we have the endoscopic? Oh, yes. Okay, this is the, we see uh, the view inside of the patient. This is the symphysis here. This is the pubic arc. And we have used these uh, very typical balloon trocar. Uh, I think it's extremely helpful and uh, it helps you to develop the extraperitoneal space very quickly. Uh, we, we use also these trocar when we do primary handle repair. I think it's very easy and not so expensive. These are the epigastric vessels. This is the spermatic cord here, this one. And the same situation on the other side, these epigastric vessels. And here, the patient probably will develop an, an, an medial handle defect. You see it here. It's not a really handle, but it's uh, an area with uh, probably in, in some years the patient has a, a handle. So we go down. This is would, the you, would you place a mesh? In no. It's, uh, the patient has no symptoms. So this is not really a, a defect. It's just uh, not as strong as it is us usually. So uh, we would not place a mesh now. But if the patient would have a handle defect, we would place a mesh at the end of the procedure. And this is in about 4 to 6% of our patients. This is the prostate here. Here is the pubic prost uh, prostatic ligament on the right side and here on the left side. And what we will do, we will perform a so-called interfacial nerve sparing. Uh, it's different from the conventional wide excision prostatectomy where we start with the incision of endopelvic fascia we don't do this now. We immediately start here uh, on the bladder neck. So I'm using the ultrasound device. At home, I'm using the sonosearch device, but only for the steps where we are really far from the nerves. As soon as we come closer to the nerves, uh, we, we uh, uh, take the sonosearch away and we use clips for the vessels. The patient's a little bit obese, you can see it. Can you bit reinkommen here? In your right hand, do you have a bipolar? In my right uh, hand, this or, is my right hand what? here, this is the bipolar. And in the left hand, yeah. I have this instrument here. I always perform laparoscopy in okay. that way. You hear the fibers of the bladder neck? We inserted the catheter at the beginning, 18 French catheter. We don't have any instrument in the rectum. Could you so, so maybe, maybe until when, when he has the bladder neck. Can you speak a little bit louder? Uh, I can't understand very well. Yes, we do. Thank you. Maybe they, they the should turn up. Here in the room, we are quite loud. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is the bladder neck. You can see it very nicely here. I don't like the, the ACE here. This Are you trying ACE. to do a bladder neck sparing when, approach? When, whenever we can, we, we try to preserve the bladder neck because uh, it's very good for early continence. Mm -hmm. Jens Uwe, we are now leaving you for a moment and okay. want to uh, see Richard starting, okay. but you are still on the screen. Okay, thanks. Richard? Yes, I'm coming. Yes, I'm coming. Bonjour. Bonjour. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to, to be with you today. And uh, we are going to begin a radical prostatectomy by robotic approach.
So you see, we have incised here and the pelvic and pelvoprostatic fascia. Here, go back a little bit. You see, this is the pubic ligament, and we try to preserve. Uh, we, we have done an incision here on top of the prostate on this side and then the same on the other side. This is prostatic capsule. You can see this is the pubic ligament and come in. So this, you see it when you can't see the muscle fibers of the levator. This is periprostatic fascia. So we have an access to the prostatic capsule from anterior on both sides. Yeah, you see that? And we need this later for the, for the so, nurse so if, procedure. Uh, and now this... If you would uh, agree, let's say the no just the nomenclature, it would be nice. So this would be the... the you, this is very interesting because you keep the levator fascia on the levator muscle. That's right. Uh, we, keep, we, we leave the, the levator fascia and we go directly on the prostatic capsule from the, cr from, from the top of the prostate. This is the key for so-called interfascia nerve sparing. And we will find the same plane when we dissect Denovase fascia down from the prostate. So uh, I, I will show it later to you and then uh, probably it's, uh, it's uh, easier or better to see. So this is blood and neck, you see it, and we go straight forward through the blood and neck. And we, we do this at a 6 o'clock position. Uh, we don't mobilize laterally too much because we come very close to the nerves. So we go just here through the blood and neck. And the next structure that we will see are the vas, uh, the vas deferens from the left and the right side. Okay, there's the vas. What about this, <laughs> what about this muscle uh, described by Sechin, what we, we called, uh, used to call the structure, you come, the anterior layer of the denovius fascia, and you know, uh, Guillaume has published that this is a muscle, I call it always Sechin's muscle, I think this is also interesting for orientation. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I think, I don't know, this is, uh, depends, uh, I think we, you don't need it. Here's, the, 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 the most important thing is, here's the blood and neck and go straight forward uh, in, the, in the posterior direction. There's no risk to injury the rectum, just straight forward. The, the biggest mistake what you can do is uh, if you would dissect here too tangentially and then you would end up into the prostate and that's what we don't want to have. But you see, the, this is what I mean. You are not directly coming to the... Now it's, now it's the vas. This is vas this, difference. This yeah? is the vas. Mm. This is the vas. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you have seen it, you can use blunt dissection to free it a little bit more. Now it's easy to see on both sides. Mm -hmm. Let's say this is, a, you know, this is like so a you window keep this, that we this created. So you keep... Yeah. So you keep this muscle or what you have uh, to the prostate. So you go directly through the tissue around or before yeah. the vas uh, to the vas. Huh? So directly to in the, the vas, seminal yeah. vesicle. That's right. And the mm. next step is we mobilize the vas. Uh, it's always good when you cut the vas a little bit longer. That's why we try to mobilize a little bit. Because then the access to the tips of the seminals is easier. Okay, so maybe now we can leave you for a moment. Yeah. Uh, because, and then uh, see, we see Richard.
and not a uh, solar surge or ultra-session to, to mobilize the seamoll. You see, it's full of uh, fluid here. Give me a moment. Uh, Jens? Jens. Okay, this is the, the right seamoll is already mobilized. Um, so there's some tissue. No, no, the, no, no, Jens, no, no. Jens, Terry yeah. is going to ask you something. Yeah, please. Yes. Uh, Jens, good morning. And, good morning. Um, please, Can you speak a little bit louder? I can't hear you. Speak a little bit louder. I can't hear you. Yes. Do yeah. you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes. Do you hear me? Yeah, yet now I can hear you. Yes, it's okay? Yeah, now it's okay. Please, can you define... Please, can you define your, your operative strategy if you decide to preserve or not preserve the, the nerves? Do you use a, a thermic dissection like you have used this morning? In any case, or if you want to have a full preservation, do you change and do you, do you use scissors? And, what we and do clip? when we do nerve spraying, as, as I would like to show you now, we stop now to use the, the, um, the ultra-session because I don't want to have any thermal energy when we come close to the nerves. So, but I think on top of the prostate, what okay. we did here, the bladder neck, there is no risk to injury anything with this. So for this reason, uh, we use it and now we stop. And now it's a, another important step. You see, a little bit back the camera. So this is the right seminal, this is the left seminal. Push it down here. So what we do now, in the classical nerve sperm, we would here incise denovius fascia. We don't do this. We push denovius fascia down, as you can see it here, to get access directly to the prostatic capsule. And in most cases, you can do it bluntly. Okay, go back. Take this side. So now we have a plane here medially, and we have the same on this side, here, lateral. So uh, here's, this is a little bit adhesion here uh, from the seminal. We can use the, the sonar search device for this. Jens, yeah. there is a, a little bit of a concern on the podium and maybe you can uh, comment on this, particularly where you have now the suction exactly there. Yeah. So I would say this is a vesicoprostatic junction and so you are not in the area of the nerves, but uh, maybe you can show the anatomy particularly okay, according go back. to this side. So where, where you... Okay, I, I make... Come in, push, push it here down, T4. Okay. In a, I, would, I would like to show you, when I incise here, we, we will immediately see, the, you see the, the yellow color? Can you see this? Yes. Here, this is the pre-rectal fatty tissue. Yes. This is denovis fascia. But in the intrafascia nerve we do not incise. We go between, go back a little bit, we go back between capsule and denovis fascia. That's why you can't see the pre-rectal fatty tissue. It's under the sucker. This is the seminal. This is the pedicle here running into the seminal and the prostate. And what we do now, and you see this is the same level here, the capsule from the lateral side. Go back. And what we have here, and all the nerves are here, here and deeper. So now I would like to stop to use the, this instrument. I'm using clips and the scissors to mobilize all the nerves lateral here of the prostate. And we have the same situation on the other side. Take this. Uh, first of all, we show here, you see this, I have already shown you at the beginning, and the same from here, and all this is pedicle inside this here. Good. Very nicely shown. Thank you. Okay, scissors. <coughs> now we need clips, please. Okay, good. I, I think we can now move, uh, because now everyone can understand when you are doing the dissection, we can go back to Richard.
two levels, from medially, laterally. You see here, this is periprostatic fascia. It's very nice to see. And this is endopelvic fascia. So here is, under this is the rectum. So we had mobile, we, we, we connected, let's say, this level with this level. And I think this is very helpful. I, I would not say it's a must, but it's very helpful for orientation. We, all of us know that we actually can't see many nerves. So for this reason, it is important to have something where we can orientate. And I think the capsule of the prostate is a very nice structure for orientation. And what we do, we dissect directly on the surface. You see it on the surface. This is capsule on the surface of the prosthetic capsule. So, and for this reason, uh, for this, reason uh, this gives us a kind of orientation. I hope this is understandable. And the assistant has grasped the, the, uh, the seminal from the left side. And this makes the access to the posterior part of the prostate easier for me. And whenever I can, you see, we push it down. And we don't use any energy at this uh, uh, part of the procedure. Under. So you are more or less in an avascular plane, only with some minor vessels yes, coming. That's right, only some minor vessels running into the prostate. Uh, especially when you come closer to the apex, there are a lot of, uh, uh, there's a nice, nice plane where you can dissect. So we leave this, we go to the other side, and we do the same on the other side. But on the other side, you have seen the CT scan. Little more, little risk for capsular penetration here. Okay. Again, so this I patient must have had a little bit of a prostatitis yeah. or old. Uh, Again, I would like yeah. to demonstrate the two levels: this here, lateral, and this medially posterior here on this side. So. Okay, clip. What type of clips do you prefer? You uh, we know, have a uh, multifier. Patel uses always. Uh, we have a multifier titan clip applicator. This is very quick and easy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, but I think it's not important. The hemolog is very good, so mm -hmm. it more depends on the personal preference of the uh, of the surgeon, I would say. And how do you define the, uh, the height of the incision here on the pedicle? So I, I the closest to the prostate or? Probably this is one advantage of conventional laparoscopy. You can feel. You, can, you feel the, the, the solid structure of the prostate when you touch it here and you feel the same here. And this is a very mobile structure here. You can see that. And for this reason, you can, it's, it's not the finger, of course. But you, you have a feeling, you can see, aha, this is a plane where I, I can easily dissect, and here is a strong structure, this helps you. On the other hand side, uh, when you're not sure with the plane, go back to this side, go back to this side, and then you have a feeling, okay, the bridge between is here. And now you see it's easy to cut. I think one, one important thing is, you see, uh, you know about our retrograde approach, but you, are all, you are have some orientation at least uh, anteriorly by your primary uh, dissection of the, not endopelvic, but of the periprosthetic fascia. Uh, so, so you have a good orientation. That's right. So you don't need to go down to the, uh, to the bundle. That's because right. Because you, you can already see where the bundle lies below. Absolutely right. And we, when, when we can't proceed on one side here, then we go to this side. So we have two sides for orientation. This makes it, in my point of view, easier. Or this helps, I would say, uh, for the orientation. Clip.
Está bien. This is a, you see, a nice vessel from the pedigree. Nice to see. Okay, thank you. I think we see very nicely the principle. No, now we can go back to Richard. He has the bladder neck uh, almost isolated on. Behind the prostate, this one, yeah, yeah, just, no, not this one, a little bit higher. Go back. To this, the, uh, this artery running. Go back. Yeah, the pedigal was here, in this area more. No, no, no oh, the, the small pedicle running on the prostate. This, uh, ah. you, you saw, you see it? Uh, exactly, this one. This one, I think yeah, this yeah. pedicle is very important because, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you cut it, you are in the right plane. If you don't cut it, you are... You, you, will leave, you will leave some tissue on the, on the prostate. This That's is right, a, but here a, it's extremely, a, a yeah. extremely yeah. stuck. V very important. Yeah. yeah. 
So does that mean that it's stuck? You, it's stuck you, you, and you will not remove all? Yeah, and absolutely. This is a sign. If, if you can't, you have seen it on the other side. It's a kind of key. Yeah, it's probably yeah. here. It's a risk for capsular penetration. It's very strong tissue here. For absolutely. This, for this reason, I absolutely. go yeah. a little bit more lateral. You see here, it's stuck. Normally, at this area, you can do all the dissection bluntly. So. I, I can't push, it's totally fixed here. For this reason, I will clip this. There's no way to push down. So give me a clip. I have a clip here. Okay, good. Okay, good. Fixed here. Okay, go back, midline. So, okay, now it's nearly completely mobilized. Go under the prostate. You see here on both sides the so called bundles and the rectum here. And we are very close to the apex. So, okay, go back. What we do now, we mobilize. The apex a little more, a little bit more, and then we ligate sandarini plexus. And with the same ligation, we will fix the bladder neck to the symphysis. Jens, are you really believe that this is a help? I, I, I think. Okay, it is an, you can show nicely the anatomy Come and in. it may work, but I don't think that it has an important impact on continence. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, for this reason, we started half a year, a randomized prospective study, and in a half a year, I can tell you if it's really necessary or not. I don't know. I probably, you know... Yeah, my argument would be that, that you have to... At some point, you have to cut the structure between the prostate but uh, and these ligaments. Probably uh, this bladder neck suspension is more important in non-nerve sparing cases. In nerve sparing cases, you try, you, we preserve all these structures here, the ligaments and all this, and you don't do this in, in wide excision prostatectomy. Probably, we do, we, as I said before, we do a randomized study, and uh, we will see. Uh, my personal feeling is it does not have a big effect in nerve sparing cases, but it helps to improve early continence in non nerve sparing cases. Mm. Because you, you are aware of, of many men in study who did now the two layer suture, which is also a kind of reconstruction anteriorly comparing to the classical uh, anastomosis, and there was no difference with regard of early continence. Yeah, I don't know, probably. Yeah. You know, but uh, sometimes it's good to make your own study <coughs> uh, because, you know, uh, <laughs> we have to be very critical with some results. <laughs> okay, it's mobilized here. Okay, other side. Could you, uh, okay. sorry, could you show a little bit what are critical points here? Uh, so, uh, yeah. <coughs> at uh, the ap I think the apical dissection is also very important. So, so yeah, especially just, uh, when you when explain we cut probably a little bit about. Okay, especially when we cut the apex, then it's very important because, you know, this is the, the area where we have or we, the highest risk for positive margins and high risk of bleeding. So why are you why are you not performing a stitch? Are you now doing the stitch or we do now the stitch? Ah yeah. I, I like the stitch. Uh, I, I, you, we know it from Richard that uh, you can cut the sandarini and suture later or increase the pressure, but 
I think it's, it's relatively easy to, to place a stitch here and you're really safe if you do it. It's nice to see here the apex. Go back a little bit. The end of the suture. Go back. So the assistant pushes um, the prostate towards the head because uh, to place the suture as quarterly as possible. Okay, take it. Go back. Uh, so up to now the blood loss is uh, let's say 20 cc. So okay, leave it. And we do a second loop. Um, yeah. Uve. Yeah. Come in. Yeah. Come in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you have you. very nice access on the apical dissection. You have a very nice access on the section. And do you think it's very uh, useful to, to play this stitch now? And uh, do you have experience of direct diversion of uh, plexus venous without any suture and suture after section? Have you experience? Uh, I tried it five times and uh, three, of, three out of five times we had a, a lot of blood in our sucker. For this reason, we went back. So actually, I don't have really experience with cutting without suturing. For, we always suture the sandrini. Uh, I think there are two, you know, many ways to Roma, we know that. Um, and um, I, I'm feeling safe. That's probably the most important reason to, to do this stitch. But, but as I said before, uh, you, have, you have shown it, and Richard has shown it many times, oh, we have a loop now, that there's no need to do. But I would say it's more, oh, what's this? It's a loop. It's more for experienced surgeon. Uh, I would not recommend this for beginners because, you know, you can have bleedings, even if you drop up the pressure up to 20. So, no, I know that you're doing it. Why not? Good. This was the stitch, and, and the next I would like to show is the, we use the same suture, go back, and we use this needle to go, this is synthesis here. This is the synthesis, and this is a kind of bladder elongation. Come in. This is relatively easy to do. Um, I hope it's understandable, but I think it's, it's, it's not very difficult. We know that. Probably one argument for, for this kind of suture is that we know that some patients uh, suffer. We know that from urodynamic studies come in. They suffer from a hypermobile bladder neck, and this, is, uh, this gives more stabilization. But as I said before, uh, the really answer I can give in, in half a year when we finish our study.
there was a, a small uh, node on the left side, but uh, you, you see on, on the right side the, the dissection uh, is, is done uh, completely. We have the puboprostatic ligament at this point with the uh, Santorini uh, plexus. You see the, the, the fascia. The tissue of this patient are, are very a little bit inflammatory. You see, we, we are dissecting the, the vein and here. As you said, the apical dissection is very important. So, you see, it's a, it's not, it's a little bit obese, the patient, but it doesn't matter. So, the apical dissection is actually a three step procedure, the, the, the ventral part. We have already cut, you see that, this is Sandorini plexus. Uh, and here is the orientation, the prostatic capsule. Now we cut the junction between the so-called external sphincter, and you see the plane here, and the, the apex of the prostate. And it's always, always easier to see the margin between the urethra and the, the uh, prostate here laterally. You see it very nicely. So this is the second step. And the, the, the third step is the mobilization of the, of the smooth muscular part, which is this. Can you see that? These here. Go back a little bit. A little bit, just a little bit. This is the first step. Sandorini plexus. Very this, nice. Yeah, you have this is the second step, the external, external. sphincter, the straighted part. And this is the inner layer of the urethra, which is the smooth muscular part of the urethra. We mobilize this. And we push it down a little bit. And then we cut. It's very nice to see the three steps of the apical dissection ventrally. So now we cut down and we see immediately the catheter. So we take out the catheter. And then two, two steps for the posterior apex. First is, here this is the, the verumentanum. We go caudally. So, so just made a Stop, stop, stop. Go back. Stop. Go back. Yeah. Yeah, just to show. So you want always to see the, the vero montanum Sometimes and then cut directly no, behind no. it? It depends on the patient. Sometimes the vero is deep inside the prostate. Here we are sure this is, there's no injury of the capsule, you see that. And we cut here. But you have to see the urethral crest. But very often the vero montanum is deep, deep inside the prostate. In this patient it's here. But definitely the vero montanum is a part of the specimen. That's important. If, if you see the verumentanum post-prostatectomy, then you can be sure the patient is nicely continent, but one-third of the prostate is still inside of the patient. So, and the final dissection is done from posterior laterally. That's important to protect all... You see that here, these adhesions. Can you come under the prostate, please? Okay, you see here, this is the nerve structures. And... If we would cut from ventrally, there's a high risk for, for injury of these structures. For this reason, we, we, we do the, the final dissection from, from posterior lateral. Is that understandable? You see that? Yeah. It's yes. very why, why, are you not, uh, why are you not undermining the urethra and cut through and, and do a retrograde uh, dissection at this I point? Think for, in my, I think, but this, it's my feeling, um, it's, it's, it's easier and safer because, you, again, you have the orientation here of the capsule. Uh, camera in a little bit. And very often you can push it like I, I do I now, that, you see? I think that this point, th this point is very, very important because uh, you, you have s some tongue uh, uh, yep. uh, behind and uh, if you don't turn the prostate like that, you will have positive margins. You, you, okay, you will leave some uh, part of the prostate Good, in the back. apical region. So turning the prostate is essential, I think. Okay, come in. Catheter in, yeah, please. A little bit. Cut and lift a little it bit in. Okay. So as... Good, stop, stop. So now we have mobilized here on the left side totally the urethra. Mm -hmm. And... And you are protecting the rapto sphincter or the, the recto urethralis muscle. Uh, 
So you know that. Uh, it's a big discussion if there's really <laughs> such a muscle. Um, I concentrate on the prostate, you know, and all the structures lateral of the prostate, I don't, uh, I would like, I don't like to touch, and however you call it. And I know your anatomical, anatomical studies, and therefore I was asking. Yeah. Okay, there's uh, a clip, please. Sorry. Good. Okay, it's done. You see the apex looks very nice here. It's, uh, it's really not beautiful. Injured. Yeah. So we place the, the prostate now. Thank you very much. We place it now into an endo bag. I, I wouldn't do a frozen check. It's, it's really a nice apex and. I, I really think that it's uh, recommended and the very classical no uh, standard. Uh, okay, so we, we check I think bleeding. we move over to uh, Richard for a moment and you check for the bleeders. So Richard? you see, uh, I have, uh, Jens, I, I, I have dissected completely the, the right side of the, the prostate and uh, I, I have dissected uh, laterally the blood and neck, so now I am cutting the, the blood and neck. And I try. I Could try you show to us where you are? Is this the blood and yeah, neck yeah, exactly? You see, you see the you you see the prostate. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The prostate was the pubic mm -hmm. ligaments. You see, you see the the urethra. The the I have cut the seminal uh, vesicles. The prostate is completely dissected uh, laterally. You see the Denovillier fascia, the, the bundles at this point. And now I am dissected the, 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 the blood and neck. You see the urethra is somewhere. And uh, I am cutting the fibers of the bladder at this point. And I would try to, to make the complete dissection of the urethra. Uh, before cutting it. So here you can place bipolar energy. No. Richard, I, I have seen you doing this technique by conventional laparoscopy. Uh, you, you see, by, by conventional approach, Claude, is, it's a little bit more difficult. You see the seminal vesicle here, and uh, I, I try to find the, the limit here. We have to take a lot, a lot of caution to be very close to the, the, to the prostate. For, example, for example, here we, we can protect the tissue here. You see, we, we can put a clip at this point. Richard? Oui, Thierry, yes. It's uh, speaking. Good morning. It's nice. Good morning. Please, can you precise when you decide or not to preserve vesicle seminals?
So except the PSA of 8, uh, we are in a good uh, oncologic uh, uh, situation in, in that case to, to preserve the seminal vesicles. But, but the tip of a seminal vesicle is rarely involved. Usually, is a, is a, yeah, is a basis. Yeah, there, there is a, there, there are some data uh, showing that uh, if you preserve the tip of the seminal vesicle, you can preserve uh, some nerve, and the result uh, on continence seems better. You, you have a, a study made made by an, uh, an Australian team uh, showing. Uh, uh, a very good anatomic view on the nerve at the tip of the seminal vesicles. The prostate is out. We removed the whole prostate. It's not here, you see. And we removed the whole prostate. The catheter is blocked here to... There's a little bleeding here on the right side. We stop it with the balloon. And now we wait. Thank you very much for coming back. But we, we are still waiting for the frozen section. So when the frozen section is done, we will continue with the anastomosis. Up to now, we will wait. Could, could you comment on the need of a pelvic lymph node dissection in this case? Uh, we, have, we have indications for lymphadenectomy. And uh, uh, our indications is are when the PSE is higher than 10 and or the Gleason score is higher than 6. And then we free the external like artery, the internal like artery, and the obturator fossa. That's what we do in candidates. But this patient statistically has a, a risk of 1% uh, as it was presented. So I think there's no need for lymphadenectomy in this patient. Get directly on the prosthetic uh, uh, prosthetic Gen fascia here. You, you, you see the prosthetic, the, the pelvic fascia. Is, you see the prosthetic fascia? You see the prosthetic fascia? Yeah, exactly. So, so this will be your layer. Ah, this is nice. Now, you see, this is what we saw before. It's, it's not very easy in this, in this patient. Eh? We, we have two layers. You see, the, the pelvic fascia is here. Uh, you, you have the pelvic fascia. And I try to remove mm. from the prostate the, the prosthetic fascia. I think this would, would, would be nice for you to show exactly where you have to go uh, yes, to divide your, I, I, I your going vessels to try from to, the, of the pedicle. I am going to try to show you. This is this uh, other vessel that you are yeah, describing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? You see, I, I think we can put a clip at this point. We have a fat tissue, so there are no real risk. But, but why don't you think you could put a bigger clip here to speed up the procedure? Be, be, because we have, uh, we, we have a, small, uh, a small vessel. You see, I cut the, uh, the non-video fascia to find the, the fat tissue. Yeah, but you are far away from the bundles now here, so I, I, I don't think that there is no, any no, no, risk you see, of injuring you see, you see the uh, an important is, structure. The prostate is somewhere. I'm pulling down. I want to show you if it's feasible. Okay, we, we have to leave you just for a minute because otherwise the anastomosis is ready in the other room. Yeah. So maybe we, we show the. We will come to you soon, very soon, because we just want to see a little bit of the anastomosis in the other room. Okay, okay. just okay. a moment. Okay, Jens. Okay. Jens. Yeah, Jens we. The, the I, I did. I don't know if uh, Vito told you.
And if it's bleeding, mm -hmm. I will put a clip, but... Uh, And now you can push. Yeah, you, you see, I'm going to see if uh, we have cut the last pedicle. Uh, I, I think, you know, I need a clip here, and then I, I will push. Yeah. We need... Uh, it's, uh, no, 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 here. Okay, we go back to Jens Uwe for just a moment, and then come back to you, because he has almost finished the anastomosis, okay. and then Jens. Yeah, Let's so we are performing now the four o'clock stitch, and... We have removed the, the old catheter that we inserted at the beginning and we change now to the silico silicone catheter. There's always a risk to injure a little bit the catheter with the stitch. For this reason, we change to a silicone one. Uh, in my hospital, we leave the catheter for five or six days and then we remove. And very, very rarely, under 1%, we have problems with the leak. So this is the, the lumen now. Are you doing a, a cystogram routinely? Yeah, we do it. We can do it under vision, Just but you know, I'm, I'm, I, I was sure that there is no problem with the anastomosis. You, of course, you, you should do it under vision, that's for, for sure. But, okay, come in, suction show, please. Okay, now it's very nicely to see. So what we do now, two stitches laterally, that means one stitch here at the three o'clock position. Mucosa, and this is the easy stitch because you go in at the bladder neck and out at the urethras. Let's say a one-way stitch. And this is a stitch, you know, we have this modular training, modular surgical training to teach, where the guests or residents starts with easy parts of the procedure. And when they start the suture, this, they start with this kind of suturing because this is easier than the posterior part. <coughs> Come in. What kind of needle uh, are this you using? This is a UR6 needle. Uh, it's a UR6 uh, UR uh, 2 0 micro. Mm -hmm. The structure rate in our hospital, uh, we, have, we follow up the patients uh, for three years, is uh, under 1%. Is 1 so, for this reason, we don't see any reason to use uh, monofill suture material. Okay, now the okay, so I think we, we go away back to, uh, okay. to, to Richard for the moment because he's also at the apex at an interesting part. If you would come back for the final stages because Richard? I, I think... Yes, I, I am preparing the, the yeah, apex. Yeah, of course we come back.
I push the pelvic fascia. Under, you have the, the center in plexus. Beautiful. I, I push so it. So maybe for the last stitch, we go to Jens Uwe, and then we come back. Everyone knows now the anatomy. Jens, Uwe. Show us your last stitches. Second last. Um, it's 11 o'clock. OK. I, I have some. I, I hold this suture. So the suture is fixed in my needle holder. Here you see. I have to go out. So when we do, so this was the 11 o'clock stitch. And the next, the final one is the 1 o'clock stitch. But we will fix these stitches also on the, on the symphysis. I show you. So in that way, we fix the urethra and the new bladder neck. Hold this. One thing I would like to show. So we this have is a little bit like the old. Ma can you see that we have a little hole in the peritoneum? This is like the old Marshall Marchetti. Yeah. But can you see this? This is a hole in the peritoneum, a little hole. But you see, there is yeah. no problem with the space, as long as the um, the patient is su sufficiently muscle relaxed by the anesthetist. In probably this is important to and know. And in Chandelenburg, of course. No need. No. No. Just 10 degree the Chandelenburg. It's a very good anesthesia mm -hmm. here. Not only very beautiful, it's also very good. OK, and then we use the same needle. It's not cut. Um, uh, one thing I would like really to say is uh, I have never seen a department with such a quick frozen section. So Vito, uh, really a congratulation to this structure here. OK. Dr. Armini. Dr. Armini. OK, good. So this is the fixation here. What about the tension on this? Are you really fixing it like Marshall Marchetti or uh, There's a little uh, tension. You, is this a loose? No, no, it's not a loose one. It's a t little tension on it. But as I said, we're doing a study, a randomized study to compare. If it really makes sense. Okay, you see, and now the assistant grasps the knot, so you, there's a little tension. Yeah, my, the assistant is perfect today. <laughs> Okay, come in. Not so, in Rome. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's losing a little bit. Ich bin abgerutscht. Okay. Too much So, and the final stitch is at one o'clock. Come in. You see, this is the bladder neck. Can you see that? This bladder neck, and now we, yes, stitch, we, see it. we stitch through the urethra. It's here. But this is totally different from the uh, concept of Eshtevari, who is reconstructing the dorsal vein complex at, at this part. Yeah, or or do, are you, are you, have you been influenced by the paper of Eshtevari? No, we, are, we were thinking about, and you know, a lot of people are doing this, and this is our idea to do it. So. The thing is, we have to prove, as I said many times today, we have to do randomized study to show is there really a need for this. It's, it, it looks nice, but uh, we have to be critical. There are so many nice new things. We have to prove it in randomized study, and only then we can say it's really helpful or it's not helpful. You, so we speak about so many things, reconstruction of the rectal urethralis, bladder neck preserving, and all this should have, an influ or should have an influence on the continence. And, and we have continence data from 90% in, in a year, uh, one year after surgery. How can we improve this? Or the question is, can we really improve this with these new techniques? The problem is, of course, the, the early yes, I, continence. And, uh, are you going to prove and that? Uh, probably are you going this helps to improve that, uh, the early continence. Is better than open? The needle. Uwe, did you prove that the laparoscopy is better than opened? What? Yeah, but we have to prove if this really is. Concerning continence. You see, this is the anti the anti scardino paper. No, I don't know. Okay, good. Go back. You know that laparoscopy is better than open, but I think you cannot prove it with this study. You can just prove certain principles. So this is the final stitch through the synthesis. 
And finally, we will test the anastomosis with 200 cc. Come in, it's a bit of a trade. Go back. Yeah. Go back. Okay, we, we saw it very nice, Jens. I think we will leave you now yeah, and go back way. to Richard. I think this was an excellent operation and uh, you deserve a great applause. Thank you very much.